and about the speaker pankaj is going to deliver the talk on uh, development in ios uh, so <clears throat> pankaj is a uh, uh, you know techy who has worked in honeywell and uh, airbus for full 14 years 14 plus years and then he took a decision to build ios apps freelance for the companies so he is a very good developer i have seen some of his apps so please reach out to him if you need any uh, inputs with respect to ios development uh, that's about him and he will tell more uh, over to you pankaj yeah th- thanks ramnathan for the introduction and yeah so uh, so i will uh, so to, to, to as a Ramanathan has said, I am being developing iOS app for last 14 years, and I had a prior uh, career in aerospace industry for uh, 14 plus years. So after that, I quit the job and wanted to be spend more time with family at the same time to supplement my food daily needs um, to me to meet both ends. I started doing freelancing, and uh, iOS is something I was like very keen about. Uh, basically, I'm a let's say Apple fanboy, uh, interested in Apple. Um, ecosystem so that was a very natural to go there so i'll start the screen sharing and let's start with the presentation so yeah so today we'll develop a small day the weather app for the devopedia as uh, as we all know this is for the engineers day celebration from devopedia and the celebration or engineers day is all about uh, birth, celebration of the birth and the first engineer of india he is a bharat ratna dr vishweshwarya 15 september so here that's the occasion so uh, first i will just demo the app that we are going to develop so, uh, so we have, we will develop an app like this where we, we are able to enter the city and face the temperature let us say bangalore and get the temperature back so we can add different cities and uh, it is fetching the temperature from the back uh, from the api weather api so as we explore and then we can click on individual things and see the details so this is the app we're going to see so just to give overview what's happening in the app so we have some swift ui views uh, the way you have seen the uh, detailed weather view and the uh, list of uh, weather so these are the couple of screens that we will develop today uh, so when we enter the app, uh, when enter, enter the city name, the city name is going to the weather model. So we'll develop a weather model. This is the source of truth. Uh, uh, to, to tell a little bit about SwiftUI and uh, combine, SwiftUI is a, a declarative framework. So we will declare and uh, de- do a couple of view development. And uh, this is a combine is a reactive framework which support uh, reactive programming coming from Apple. So th- th- we will have a weather model. Uh, so whatever is there in the weather model, the, that will maintain the state of the app. So we uh, fondly call it source of the truth. There is only one source of the truth. And the view will refresh based on what is there in the model. And uh, to support that, Combine provides us a couple of keywords like uh, one protocol, observable object protocol. So our weather model will uh, be like conforming to the protocol observable object. And uh, we'll also in the more object uh, in the model, you would have multiple properties and many states. The states that you want to tell to the world that that is being changed will mark those states with at the rate published property wrapper. So this is what the combine does for us. And corresponding thing in the Swift UI is uh, it supports uh, it is a, like a subscriber for the publisher uh, combined publisher. It's an inbuilt sub- subscriber. And it provides another property wrapper or a keyword called at observed object. So the object that is being published will be auto notified. So what we are going to do is we'll add a city name. The city name will go in the weather model. The weather model will do two things. It will update the the list of cities. And uh, because it's published, we will get to know that it is being updated. We'll update the view with the with the uh, city in the list. At the same time, the weather model will initiate an API call, which will go and fetch the temperature from the backend. And when the temperature is fetched, maybe after one second, two seconds, or 200 milliseconds, whatever is the time, whenever this is come back, so the weather model will be updated with that. The moment weather model is updated, 
again as the model is updated that means the source of truth is updated it will publish and the view will render so during this process the api call and all the app will be active and there is nothing app needs to worry about what's happening it will be all taken care by by the uh, 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 view model will take care of interacting with the swift view api and all so we'll be, de begin by starting a brand new project uh let us say uh, we will do new project so we'll develop an uh, ios app let us call it uh, demo weather app uh we will be uh, we, we don't need to select any team or anything so that is fine uh, we can say that this is for devopedia and uh, we'll use uh, SwiftUI for the development of interface. We'll use SwiftUI for the life cycle. There is old SwiftUI delegate, uh, UIKit delegate life cycle, but we will stick with SwiftUI and Swift as a programming language. We don't need core data or include any test on all, uh, in this today's uh, this way. We don't even need a developer license. We'll develop and run the app on the simulator itself. So we don't need a physical device for that. So we'll store it on the desktop somewhere. And uh, just local Git I'll create and I'll later on, or at the end of the talk, I'll push the app to the Git, the GitHub. So this is the standard uh, template project that has been created when we first time launch, uh, create a Swift UI app. Uh, it provides us a simple view called uh, content view. And, uh, uh, So it will, uh, and it has a corresponding uh, canvas or a preview in then and there. So if we change hello devopedia, you can see uh, immediately you are able to see what the, the code and uh, a corresponding preview changes immediately. So that's how it works uh, uh, very in instantaneously. We do it. So that saves a lot of development time. So instead of changing this, uh, let us uh, create a We'll, we'll first develop uh, this detail view, and then we'll go ahead and develop in the uh, other views. Because detail view has more things uh, to explain about SwiftUI, we'll first develop the detail view. So I will create a new file. Uh, before that, let us put this in a group called views. And in the group, I'll create a new, uh, now in this case, we are giving iOS Swift UI file. Let's call it detail or weather details. With the details. So another same way, we will immediately get a template. Uh, same template we'll get. Whenever we create a new file, SwiftUI will provide us a template file. So we have got the hello world. So but in why, what? So I will just arrange the screen so that we know what we utilize the resource as well. So this is what we want to develop. This is where our preview is, and this is where I will do the changes uh, for you to see. So instead of hello view, what we are interested in is to share some temperature. So initially, let's start that we will want to display a temperature of 21 degrees. So degree centigrade. So we can search for degrees. OK, so we can say degree centigrade. So 21 degrees centigrade. Uh, but what we would like is now we will just start playing. So we have 21 degrees centigrade. We want it to be, a, we can provide some font. So we, there are some system, for, we, there is some title fonts and all, some when, uh, inbuilt fonts are available. So the moment we change, you should be able to see the change then and there uh, happening here. But we want a very large font. So we say that we'll take uh, some system font. Uh, with a very large size and this one. So we will use some, let's say 100 uh, font weight as a ultra thin, ultra light and uh, design as rounded. Okay, so we have, we got, we are getting it there, but we don't want this centigrade to be like that, right? So what we can do is, instead of doing this, we can embed control option click. It will give us option to embed that in a horizontal stack. So we'll do uh, create that and we'll create another text below it. 
Now this text will have only 21 decimal degrees and we will remove this so that our degrees remain small. So we are around 21 degrees. But the issue is now degrees is in the center, but we want it to be aligned to the top. So what we can say is in the, in the horizontal stack, we say we want the alignment to be top. Top. OK, so we got it, but it is going little off, right? So let us do something is bringing it back down a little bit. We will add some padding and what we got is 21 degrees the way we would like. So we can make the it little larger, add some title. Uh, we'll give the font as title. So we got our 21 degrees well aligned the way we would like it here. But what we want is we, we want everything to be at the top. So what we can do is embed this horizontal stack again, con command option click. We have option to embed it in a vertical stack. So horizontal stack gives the option to put the things next to each other horizontally. Vertical stack will give option us to put the things one below the other. So we'll put that and it has come another view called spacer, which means that it will occupy all the space. So now our 21 degrees has gone up. So this is how it's easy. We are not, so far we have not run the simulator. We are doing everything in Xcode. This is just a preview and this is the simulator that is that we are trying to mimic. So what do we have below the uh, this one? We have another horizontal stack with the high and low temperature. So let us do that. We can add another horizontal stack. This horizontal stack has a, a text uh, with high value of 28 degrees. So we can take that. Yeah, another degrees. So this time we'll take just this degrees. So 21 degrees. And uh, next to this, we have another low value. Of 17 degrees or 19 degrees 19 degrees so this is taking shape a little bit like we got our um, uh, top view uh, with the main temperature 20 degrees and the horizontal stack. then we have some details below that so again we have some uh, so below the in the vertical stack in the vertical stack the vertical stack has one horizontal stack for the, displaying the temperature and the um, degree centigrade symbol another one to uh, display the high and low below that we can enter uh, let us say what is the how it is like little mid, small description and a little detailed description so again we will can just put two text boxes one below the other so text box uh, text sorry uh, text view it is uh, cloudy and uh, another text view broken cloud so at present i am doing everything hard coded just to see get the feel of it so we got this so we want the uh, the cloudy to be a little large so we can change the font to title so it is becoming large and uh, the other one also we will change the font to title three, which is little smaller than the title. So we have title, title one, title two, title three, like that. So, so this is how our uh, um, detail weather view is coming up. But all the things are currently hard coded. So instead of having everything hard coded, uh, okay. One last thing I will show, which is very interesting, is uh, let's uh, add some gradient there. So for this uh, V stack. We can see that uh, okay, everything is in black, and uh, let it be. We will change it later. We will add a background. So for the view, we can give the background, and the background can be uh, by default it's taking blue, but we can give whatever uh, background we want. So we will give a background of uh, background of linear gradient. So again, that's another inbuilt view. Linear gradient. Okay, it is coming with its own default uh, colors and all. So we will change that. So we will want it from purple to blue. And we want to start the gradient from the top instead of leading. And we want to take it down to the bottom.
Okay. So, so this is how our view is taking up. This is a detailed view, and we want to have give some shading also. So what we can do is again, I will just embed the entire thing. So command option click again. Uh, I'll embed this entire thing another in the in a V stack or a group, but I will change it later. So you don't want group, but we would want it to be navigation view. So we will not see any impact of navigation view now, but we, when we give title, navigation view title, so the title we'll give is, let's say, this is the temperature for, okay, London, London. So even though uh, it is a navigation title, we will not see unless we put it in a navigation view. So we can resume this here. So we got the title and the view here. Okay, so we will uh, continue. But now at present, we are hard coding all the values, right? Uh, there are two more things to add, humidity and pressure. We'll add it in the, as we go further. But currently we are add hard coding all the values. So instead of hard coding all the values, what we want is this data to be coming from some model. Okay, so let us go, uh, go back. And uh, so we are going to use uh, API, weather API. So this is the current weather API. Uh, I have registered and created the uh, key for it. So this is the API and this is the kind of response we'll get. So I am using this uh, JSON editor online. Uh, so what we are in, this is the response, uh, whatever sample response that given, I have just copied it here for easily understanding the JSON. So this same thing is here actually. So this is a code view and a tree view. So we are in the tree view. So we are interested in the weather thing. Uh, so weather is an array of adjacent objects and it has uh, something main drizzle and description light intensity drizzle and we are also interested in this another object called main which has temperature pressure humidity minimum temperature maximum temperature so these are the data we are interested in so let us create a model for that so we will create a weather uh, response model because this will be the response of our api so we go back to we we'll bring this back up so we'll create another file this is uh, views so we'll create another file so this time we will create a model so we'll create a swift file and not swift ui so we'll create a file called weather response what does weather response have? this entire thing is a weather response so we'll define a struct called a weather response so in this struct we are interested in two things we are interested in main and weather so what is a weather so we need to come up with some uh, name for this so we'll call it description it's more description so we'll create another structure for weather description weather description Weather, disc weather description has two things, some main, which is a string, and description, which is a, this one. So let us say copy main, uh, let main be a string, and uh, let description be also a string. So we can now create here one object of type weather. Which is of type weather description so we got one so we have to create another one called main so main is actually the weather of it so we'll create another structure to hold the weather so typical naming convention and convention is the classes and the structures and enums will keep the cap first capitalize so what all we it has it has temperature pressure humidity and all and all are uh, let's say doubles so we can say let temp uh, double uh, let pressure double let uh, mean take okay i just take humidity so we are we are already showing like right, low temperature so okay humidity it's double then we have mean temp. So mean temp is the, doesn't look like right name. So we'll say low and we'll say it's a double. So because we the, there's a naming mismatch, what, uh, okay. 
we we want all these structures to be decodable so that when we fetch the data we want we will make use of another swift feature which is decodable uh, which will uh, uh, automatically decode for us so but to decode this low uh, the name is uh, the name in the the key in the json is a temp minimum but we want in a swift to be as low so we have to define an enum all coding keys which is string and it for, for conforms to coding key uh, protocol and in the coding key protocol we say that uh, low we don't want low is there is a low we want it to be low but what is temperature mean similarly we would want high another case for high which is m max so we can add another label here Right. Also double. So for the completeness, we also need to just define these coding keys. So what I can do is just make some space for it, and we will use some multicultural feature of the Xcode uh, to just take these things quickly. Copy and we say paste. Case. That's it. So we are done. So now we are confirming to the codable protocol and we are able to do this. So temp, we have temperature. So similarly, temp is not a right, very nice name. So we can make it temperature probably, uh, which is equal to temp in the JSON and we can make it temperature. We have temperature, pressure, humidity, low and high. High and low, I'll make it. So we got this, uh, our response is ready. To, uh, to support our development, what I'll do is we can just make an extension. Uh, we'll just create some dummy data on the weather response. And we'll just create some static uh, or static variables. Uh, we let us say variable, we want uh, cold weather equal to so this is a cold weather we will say this is of type weather response and uh, okay so we will return we will create a weather response and return so we will have a weather response but to create weather response okay i have not added main yet so main let main is of type weather so it will ask for both the things. So it will ask us to add both of them. Okay, just do it again. Weather response. So we need to create a main and weather both. So we have to create first main and weather. Let main is a weather which has no values this is not required this is a computer property so main weather So we'll give some temperature, let us say it's cold. So let us say nine degrees, uh, some pressure of one zero zero four maybe. Humidity 35% and high is uh, maybe 17 and low of five. So we can pass uh, that. In the main, instead of main, let us call it main. And we can pass main. Similarly, we can create another one. Uh, now this one we want uh, weather. This is a weather description, which has two things. Again, I'm doing instead of assignment with declaration. Just two things. Cloudy. So what do we what did we have? Cloudy and broken clouds. Let's do that. Broken clouds. So we can pass weather here. 
so now our our this is the response right so typically we also need a city name so we would need another one so this guy instead of going inside the weather response i will just take it outside okay let us do that later so we uh, basically we also need another structure which is uh, for city storing the city city so i'll create another structure uh, which is city and uh, same uh, it has a name string and it has a It has weather response as one of the objects, so which is of type weather response. And uh, this could be nil because initially when we add a city, as we see in this uh, one, when we first enter the city, it will have only city, but it will not have the weather. So in the to begin with, the weather response may or may not be there. So we'll begin with the height. And we need to uniquely identify. So there is another protocol in Swift which is identifiable. So we can make use of that. It requires that we define a property of ID, and we can let Swift come up with a unique ID for it. So we got this uh, identifiable uh, protocol. So this city is ready for us. So weather response. So now we have a sample weather response. So we what we can make use of this sample weather response to display the things in the view. So we'll go back to the weather detail view. So I'll resume and I'll hide this file navigator. And we'll see that this guy needs a weather response. OK, so and somebody should provide it the weather response. It will cry because it doesn't have at present the weather response. So what we can do, so in the preview, it is saying that, oh, I'm not, I don't know where to get the weather response. So what we can say is, OK, we have created a weather response for you. Weather response and weather response dot cold. So we made this cold weather response. So now it has taken the cold weather response is passed to the weather detail view. So weather detail view has the cold response uh, response. Now here we can display. Instead of displaying the temperature 21 degrees, what we can say is take the weather response dot main dot temperature but it may or may not be there because uh, yeah. response so we'll see this and if we review now okay this is not we want right nine degrees this, this is not like very what we would like to see it so i'll just replace this by something we'll just format it the way we would do in a swift in a simple c so we can say that uh, we want it to be a string with format uh, so format is a uh, percentage uh, 0 dot 0 f and its value is this is the value so we got nine degrees so we got uh, we are able to now take for the response read the response and uh, re reply so even in for the high and low we can do the same way i will just copy this thing here uh, for the simplicity uh, so high this instead of this 28 degrees uh, hard coded we can have low uh, high temperature and here we can have similarly low temperature so low temperature now these are the temperatures it is displaying as it is coming from the so this 17 and 5 is what we had defined in the weather response sample data the 17 and 5 if we change this to let us say 7 and 13 or yeah 13 and we go back to that weather details resume so we will see it is it is reflecting the change so uh, our weather response so basically we are able to do this so similarly we can go ahead and add humidity and all but we'll take it little late first we will see that how do we make the uh, so in the same fashion we can use horizontal stacks and vertical stacks with coming up so this view what we see uh, for the humidity and all this is another uh, horizontal stack in the horizontal stack it has one two vertical one vertical stack a spacer and another horizontal stack and it has a value of 
label of 45 degree percentage here and like that so this vertical stack has two texts like that so we will do it a little late first we'll just complete the entire flow uh, thanks to the time constraint so we'll go to the content view we'll modify the content view itself so currently the i would uh, so we can resume the preview so it is showing this but our content view what do we want in the content view our content view we want a list of cities so this instead of devopedia we let us say we call it bangalore and we do padding will not worry about it so we got this we want basically we want another city below it right the moment we add maybe london but uh, this doesn't work that way we have to put this in a list to tell that i have a list of cities so when done so we got a list of cities like this but uh, we cannot do hard coding right so it is good that we can have uh, some let's say city names uh, as an array as uh, array which we, which has let's say paris and uh, say mumbai okay so swift provides another uh, one uh, view called for each so for which you need so that we can say that go over the city names but it needs to know how do i identify uniquely so we say that you can identify uniquely by itself and uh, we can get uh, okay i just take name as input in the this as a closure and then we can put text i will get rid of this so that you will see it properly text name and uh, then we don't need this data there so if i now resume we will see it changes to paris and all so if i now modify it and add another city here let's say boston and uh, resume the preview we will see it is being changing then and there so this is a data part of it and uh, this is the view part of it whenever the data part of it is modified we have to stop and uh, resume the preview if we just change it so if i change the view say we add some font uh, and all it will happen uh, immediately the, you can change the uh, check it the, the Im change immediately so foreground color let us say blue so you can see it is when the view changes it is the preview reflects immediately but the when the state changes uh, we have to resume the preview so okay for timing i will get rid of all this uh, this is even this is just to demonstrate how the list is there how we create the list but we don't want a list of we also want to add on the top of the list we would uh, we want that uh, place for entering the city uh, city right so this we need on top of the list so what we can do is we can embed the list in a vertical stack so this and on the vertical stack we add a horizontal stack this horizontal stack uh, will have text field earlier we used text to display now we will use text field and so the placeholder is uh, enter city name enter city name and uh, it has it needs to a uh, binding so whenever we give this uh, text field when the data changes where do you want to store the data so we will define a state property state where uh, city name or a new city new city which is string and its default value is this one let's say so this then we can do this binding saying that okay please bind this uh, text field with city name okay and below that we also want a button uh, with the text add city and what is the action it should go and add city to the city names uh, for timing i'll just uh, put action as just a print some dummy action basically print uh, city added or adding city i'm more interested to show you the uh, preview how it looks now with this change
okay demo effect extrude is not happy okay it works so it is going from edge to edge right so if we enter there, then there, there is another it is going edge to edge so better what we can do is we can just add some padding across the horizontal stack view so we say add padding okay so now so far we were seeing the static preview but there is a live preview also is possible so live in the live preview we can just go ahead and say a new city is uh, delhi add city and uh, it's not adding because we are not doing anything but uh, basically you get the picture that it can work okay so this is how we can get display cities but what we want is not an array of city names but we would want uh, our uh, to have as i mentioned in the first slide we want to have observable object in the slides that we want an observable object of cities so let us define that at the rate observable object what we have observable object variable of cities it is of type okay uh, what do we what do what is the type so we don't know the type so we'll come back to it because we need to now define so basically we don't want these city names and all so we will get rid of that uh, as we proceed but um, we would need uh we want a city so we want an array of cities right we need we have not defined any place to store the array of cities so let us go ahead and define a view weather view model so we'll create another uh, swift file not swift ui file called weather model okay it will make use of combine so we'll import combine So, uh, so far, the other model we have defined as structures here also and here also. But now this one, uh, we want it to store single instance. So, we will uh, uh, come up, we will define a class. So, this is a class which is weather model. So, what does weather model hold? So, we have a city. We have already defined a city. City has a name and response so we want array of here we want at published variable cities which is an array of city okay so we want to give an initial value to it so we initial value is empty so this we can make it simple because it is can infer the type we can say okay it's an empty array of cities so we got the published empty array of cities and we also would need a method to add a city so we would need a public function to add city so name is a string and uh, so what it does is so we'll just create a city a initial city uh, city equal to city with the name we don't have the uh, weather yet so we can create this and we can add it to the cities cities dot add cities are append city uh, the variable city not the class city so this one i am doing wrong city so we got the city, uh, we have created an instance of this city and we are adding it to the model. So the, the way we explained in the slides, so this is the first step. We add the city, the city is added in the model and this model will be available in the, it will refresh the model. So we'll go back to the now uh, our uh, main view. So I will get rid of this one again, uh, reduce the size of the area. So here now we know what is the type of the cities. Cities is a weather, sorry, is a weather model. And uh, this is where we will first instantiate the weather model. So cities, so instead of calling it yeah, cities, let it be cities weather model. And here we can create uh, uh, 
uh, weather model uh, weather model instantiation so this is where we are instantiating the model so we are creating an object of so again this this part is redundant because it knows the right hand side is a weather model so cities is a weather model so we got the weather model so this is observed. so we in the weather model if the, we are public in the weather model we are publi publishing cities okay so here we have not mentioned that this is a observable object that is why it is crying so we are saying that this is the observable object it could have more data but at present it has only an array of cities and this array of cities it is publishing and who is using it uh, the content view is the one which is going to make use of it so let us say resume so now that we have marked a weather model as a observable object now only then only we can observe it so it's an observe object so here uh, the list will be not the like looping over the city names but we would rather we want the list to be like like looping over the cities so in the city so what I, we can say is uh, here instead of list city names we want to loop over the cities so we say we will loop over the cities and what we get is not name but we'll get a city and the city itself has a name okay because city is identifiable we don't need to have this part here so this is how uh, our uh, view change so we will say city in for each cities cities uh, okay see not cities but uh, okay sorry my bad uh, cities is a variable inside so outside variable we will name at let's say city model so we will loop over city model cities inside the city model and for each city we will be able to do this so we can now resume uh, when the preview resumes so what we'll see build the app build success rate try now again so we got the city uh, only thing now instead of here uh, we can add city and add city but nothing is happening because we have not called so now we have a view model so what we can do is so this names is not required i can get rid of it uh, so in the in the in the action of adding city what we can do is we can say that city model dot add city name and the city name is what what is available in the new city and at the at the end what we say is uh, whatever was earlier city entered we can get rid of it so let us see now resume the this one what happens so where do we reach so far so we can add london add city so see what happening is when we say add city city is getting added to the model model is publishing when the model publishes it says okay I got, uh, I, I have observed it and I noticed that there is a change in the model and because there is a change in the model, the view is redrawn and we got a city here. So if I do like this, add a city, London, Paris, Bangalore. So our first loop is working. We, we are able to start from the Swift UI, go to the weather model and all. So now what we want is whenever the user clicks on the weather model. So what we do is uh, instead of having no data, I will just modify this city here and I will say, okay, I will just give second parameter also city name, comma, uh, how is the city defined? See, city has name and weather response. So we can give the second parameter uh, here as weather response. And we say that it, uh, weather response is the default response for timing. Cold weather. So, the struct city is a struct which has identifiable name and weather response. Okay, let this. 
okay uh, i think my bad uh, there again uh, the ct we have made this as a variable but this will change over the time right so we have to make it a variable so we can now go to the uh, model so this should be fine now because it it can accept it as a second way argument so when we are doing this kind of way uh, we we are able to get that response here back so now if i go to the content view again our content view is behaving the way we would want it so the content view we are able to add a city and city is list happening so we don't have the title so to add a title what we do is we can uh, embed the stack view inside another view let us say this time i will embed it in a, some group we, we don't need that group basically we want to embed in navigation uh, navigation view so when we insert in navigation view we get the title at the top and uh, we can give the title to the content of the navigation view and not to the navigation view so navigation view title uh, is a weather app or a demo weather app so we said demo so let's stick with what we did in the sample app so demo weather app okay so now this city what we want is uh, whenever the user clicks on the city we okay let's say you user adds the city and whenever he clicks on the city we want to go to the detail view to do that uh, swift provides additional one more thing called navigation link navigation link navigation link takes destination so what is the destination in our case in our case our destination is the um, weather details view so weather details view and what does weather detail take it takes a weather response and we already have weather response in the city so from the uh, city as weather response so we can pass the weather response to it and what is the content of the view the content of the view is only uh, okay we'll do some change there so the content we can do is we want the content to be this not anything but city name so it is crying because when we were did the uh, weather details we said that weather response is not we didn't made it optional so let us say it may or may not be present so uh, we make it optional so because with the response to optional we have to tell okay if the data is not there what what should it do we say that where the data is not there you just display uh, maybe 0, 0.0 so this is one place uh, what should be the high value let us say when weather is not there let us say you display high as uh, uh, 50 degrees and uh, similarly we will say that uh, weather response is uh, optional with the response is optional and we'll say when there is no low you put minus 25 as the default value so this should be okay now so in this case like if we do not provide now it's okay to not to not provide with the response so we can say we can get rid of this one can say it's nil so when it is nil and resume you will see that it is changing to the default value of zero degrees because temperature is not there we say default zero degrees and uh, high of 50 degrees okay so i need one zero there high of 50 degrees and low of minus 25 degrees 50.0 25.0 or let's say i can just give zero there or uh, as we were doing uh, maybe minus five degrees so we are getting this minus five degrees like this so we are saying that this is optional this may, we may or may not get if we don't get this will be the default state that's what we will achieve so now we can go to content view content view now everything is fine there is no more warning our uh, things are being displayed properly so let us try what happens now when we add a city let us say city again london add city we got this and we can go and see so our app is kind of taking little shape it is not the way we actually it is so far we'll uh, we'll make the required changes so 
so uh, so one more thing i can do is in the city model when we are adding a city okay now we will okay we have to introduce the third section so so far we are getting is we are adding a name we are displaying it and going back to the list we are modifying both list and the details based on what is being added so now we'll introduce another class for the services or before that maybe in the this one uh, uh, what i can do is let us say to simulate what is happening let's say dispatch q dot main uh, async after after one second let us say we are getting the response so now plus one second we are getting a response uh, and uh, what we get is uh, what uh, once we get that we'll say we'll modify the city so in the list of cities we have to find the city and change its value so we'll say uh, we'll find the index if let index uh, of cities so now that we are in a closure we have to say sales of cities uh, index of there is a function called fir first index on the array first index what is the what is the what we can do is first index okay I, I would no need it we know that first parameter will get access like this of id matching the id of the city equal to city dot id so we got the first index and if we get it then we'll modify that cities uh, cities uh, self dot cities at that index with the let's say default with the response to begin with dot full weather so what we have got it here up here so this is not required okay not on the cities but it's on the weather response So of the given cities weather response is what we are modifying so cities weather response is what we are modifying so weather response of the city we are modifying in the model and we are modifying after one second cannot convert value of city to not first it is first index function is first index so first index will return the index which is a it will be integer and it should be okay fine i think so now if we go back to the content view and try to simulate uh, resume now we add a city here boston add city so after one second it will have a response and we go back to weather and we'll see that weather is already coming here after one second so here we'll just modify content view a little bit. Uh, I will get rid of this to make more space. So instead of displaying city like this, what I'll do is I'll create another view called uh, this time I'll make a Swift UI view. And the Swift UI will, will be uh, city row view. So what does city row view have i'll get rid of this city row view we will provide it a city it will get a city from uh, somewhere we'll we'll pass the city and uh, what it will do it will have we want it to have like this right left side left side we want the name and right side we want the temperature to be displayed so we, it is as you would know by now it is a horizontal stack in the horizontal stack we will add first the name of the city so city dot name and a second one will be that display of the temperature so we just have done the display of temperature in the details i will just take it from there so this is the display of temperature come back to the city row we want display of temperature but it is coming from the not uh, weather response is inside the city so city dot response 
that will be the response and that's how it will come uh, preview is giving some issue because it doesn't have a city so we can maybe create a city for it uh, city with name and response let's say name is uh, Bangalore and the response is again we will use that the meeting that we have created in the beginning so now if we resume we will see how the row would look so it has Bangalore and nine oh we want the spacer in between right we want to keep it as far apart as possible so we'll add a spacer view there in between so this one uh, it's going too much age to age so what happens when we don't have sweet what happens if we don't have the weather so what we can do is we can say let temperature we can do change this to say if let temperature is present then only we'll display the temperature if the temperature is present we display the temperature so now instead of doing all this circus thing uh, format is required we can say that we are displaying temperature and if the temperature is not there else part we will say that there is another thing called progress view so we will display the progress view so now we will resume and uh, it is going too much to the adding so we can add some padding so we see that Bangalore and temperature is coming. So if we do not provide the temperature, if this value is not there, it's nil, we'll get a progress view. So if I keep it in a live mode, you will see the progress view coming like this. So the city row is coming okay. nicely. So we can take okay, a quick time check. It's one hour. Okay. Please I will just integrate on. this part into the content view. Okay. Please tell me. Yeah. On. Instead of uh, having uh, the text view up. here. Yeah. Thanks, Ramakar. So we can say in uh, city row view which is taking city and we already have the city so we get a feeling of the app so yeah so now we can add a city uh, let us say some city london add a city so we are uh, doing this so we are going and adding a city in the city we have got this uh, response coming after one second and we are giving this response so with the response here i have added weather response because earlier it was not required so we don't need this cold weather response we just need a because so by default it will be nil so initially the city when we create add the city it will not have weather response and after one second we'll get the weather response so if we go to the content view and uh, resume so now what will happen is initially when we add a city Bangalore it doesn't have uh, data and after one second data has come and when the data has come we can see the data here so other things we have not yet added so I am not sure Ramnathan do we have way to add the API call sorry you are asking me yeah, yeah, but uh, do I have time to add the API services remaining? That's what okay, idea. you can do it in next five ten minutes and then we'll open up the for questions. Uh, I can do we can do Possibly like that. Five, or I already have the built in app, so I can explain what's happening there. That also works. Please so, go ahead. Yeah, so whatever sample app that I have created, this is what it is. It's uh, what we have, it has all the things. So, where we have left. So currently we are in the content view. Let's go to the content view. So our content view has same. We have this title and all padding. We are doing for each looping over it and adding a city uh, row. So here I have just given a frame of 56 so that it looks a little better. And what I'm more interested in is in the add city function. What is happening in the add city function? In the add city function, uh instead of having this mock we can have this actual uh, api call so we are cre we, i created an, another service called api weather service this is a combined service to create the weather uh to fetch the api okay idea is to fetch weather. so like all the uh, foundation classes are initially url session was having a data task but now being a foundation class it is providing another method called uh, to create publisher so publisher is a combined concept so this guy is a uh, is returning a publisher earlier url session was only having this one so this is how we create the url for the set with the given city so what a city comes this url what we is there as given in the current weather app 
So what we need is API uh, dot open weather app dot org data 2.5 weather and here we are to give this name of the city and the key ID. So that is what is being done here. We created a, a URL with that information. So we got the URL created. This print statements are just for the debugging purpose. We can get rid of those. So the typically response what when we get a response it we will get data part of it the response we will get the response part and the error part so i am doing the positive flow here so we will assume that the data is there so we get the data uh, from data we, instead of, of the three attributes we will use only data then we will decode it using the uh, into the json response uh, in our weather response using the json decoder so the decoded data we are saying that the typically the api will be running on the back uh, back thread uh, background thread so we will say that no 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 please do the further processing in the foreground thread that's why this is done to the foreground thread and then we do this erase to any publisher this is required because uh, to hide the complex uh, it will make very complex type so to hide that we would need that so this is the uh, response will it uh, the weather service will give us the um, publisher basically so this is like any other publisher so this will once this is done it will publish so this one we are using in the model to fetch data to fetch. So we are, what we have done is we create a weather service fetch response. So when the response is received, we are saying that I want to consume that response in the completion. Uh, we are not doing when we receive the value. What we are saying is, OK, what is the what is the weather we have received? So uh, the publisher, when we sync, it has two parameters, uh, one on completion and received value. So we are focusing on the received value. So received value will be a weather response because the publisher is defined to return weather response. So this is a weather response publisher. So it will return us a weather response. So the same logic we have there, finding the city and modifying the weather response, what we have done in the mock. And we are saying that uh, storing in cancelable. If we don't store it, uh, it will be basically this is a local variable right within this function so at the end of the function the variable might go so that's where we need to do uh, collect that variable so that it remains in the scope so we are just storing in array so that it doesn't lose its scope and uh, yeah so that is how the linking from the model From the view model, when we fetch response, this is the mock one the, what, that we have already implemented, basically the timer one, which is after one second. So this is of not of our interest. Yeah, this is not of our interest. So with the response, we are creating a, uh, this one and uh, completing it. So when it appends, when we got the data oh, here here it, uh, here the model is getting modified at the cities when it is modified it is publishing and when it publishes it will we are observing it in the content view and uh, this is what is happening so the entire app we can uh, run in the simulator so i can go to the live preview mode resume When done, when we add, it is added. The response is very quick from the API, thanks to the good broadbands available nowadays. And when we click on London, we can do this. So just to cross check, we can maybe go to some weather thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Accu weather, let us say. So we just try a couple of cities. Like let's say current weather in Bangalore is 24 degrees. So if I, I go back and add Bangalore. Oh, this is a. Um, it's calling the mock API here, I think. Add city. Try again, content view. Bangalore, add city. 
ओके लंडन सम इश्यू फेचिंग लंडन इज एस फेचर आई थिंक बैंगलोर स्पेलिंग आई मेड अ मिस्टेक बैंगलोर एंड एन सिटी इट इज ऑटो करेक्टिंग बैंगलोर एन सिटी सो ट्वेंटी सिक्स डिग्रीज ओके देर इज डिफरेंस बिटवीन ब्लॉक let us say phoenix excessive heat warning 35 degrees phoenix let us see what we get in our app thirty four degrees okay so there is per may be pursued and all is there is difference we are using uh, a, we are using open weather api maybe it has its own temperature i don't know open weather home okay it doesn't have yeah search for the city here we can say uh, phoenix search. phoenix us 35 degrees 34 degrees and uh, we are getting 34 degrees okay we are displaying with two decimal points Paris maybe add city thirty three point nine Paris France fourteen degrees so we are getting that so we so that's how it works shall we go for a questions or something Raman yes we can open the floor for questions. i have uh, enabled the mic of all the participants uh, so if anyone has questions they can unmute themselves and uh, ask questions uh, sanjeev here uh, hello thank you uh, yeah hello uh, thanks a lot pankaj it is uh, like very engaging uh, it, it went very fast uh, uh, so we will have on the youtube channel also this recording my question is uh, uh, for the android thing na nowadays if you see react js using react js and uh, hybrid platforms they are able to uh, launch the app uh, write the app uh, os as well as android so similarly if you are coming from the uh, ios background is yeah. it to export these apps to android platform uh, not for the android platform but uh, if we are using like uh, standard uh, features fifth things uh, somebody has come up with a project called it can be transported to web assembly mm -hmm. and web assembly can use in a browser so basically you can run this app in a web assembly there is a swift web assembly one conversion is there i came so that would be a hybrid app, web app basically yeah it will be a web app yes web assembly okay. so uh, to add the complexities in this app or this this was a good toy model uh, yeah, yeah. what do you uh, suggest us to do because this is quite uh, engaging and learning is quite motivating so what is the next step to learn this kind of swift, swift apps uh, so there are plenty of resources available online uh, to learn swift uh, I, i all my studies are happening basically uh, if we go to the developer website to the apple developer website mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of documentation and videos are available if you go to wwdc videos uh, they have plenty of videos actually video sessions on what is happening uh, so almost 200 sessions are there okay find more about the sessions you can go and uh, there are sessions on all topics mm -hmm. so there are video sessions uh, recording videos for all like uh, you can say like say swift ui uh, so there are videos i can i will uh, like when i will share the links with uh, ramnathan and arvin and uh, sure. they will uh, share with you thanks thank you so much uh, there are i can there are others also like there is another one person called paul hodson he he runs hacking with swift uh, website so which has a very good content actually it has some uh, uh, good content uh, it, he runs some couple of courses here online free courses 100 days of swift and 100 days of oh. swift ui 
Mm-hmm. So, which gives a good idea, like a basic start. It has a very good start of what to do and all. So, Great. if we do by day by day, like it's like again, it has a video format as well as a, you have you have a script. You can either read or watch the videos. So, this is also a very good resource for learning Swift UI or Swift. Sure, hacking with Swift from Paul Hudson. Yeah, thanks. thanks. And there are other also, you know. Yep, Pankaj, what is the maintenance that will be required? You have written the code and deployed the app and everything is looking great. Uh, any maintenance you do or the, how often do you uh, do such maintenance for the app? Uh, like, okay, we are talking, this is like basically, no, that is a, you caught, you actually caught the good point. Swift UI today, like UI earlier in the, on the, I will speak only on the iOS, Apple platforms, iOS. In the uh-huh. iOS platform earlier, uh, there was UI kit and UI kit has a very, very good inbuilt feature uh, testing uh, frameworks available, XCT test, uh, okay. test frameworks. Okay. So using that, we can um, uh, really uh, do good testing, but the, for the Swift UI point of view, it's still new, nascent, uh, only two year old, and still many things are not possible, uh, uh, like, uh, it, or many things there, there are rough edges are there, which is being refined. So even though after two years, uh, I think uh, next week we'll get the iOS 15 and the third Swift UI 3. And uh, like currently I am using Xcode 12, 12.5. Uh-huh. But uh-huh. next week uh, I expect Xcode 13 to release with uh, Swift UI version 3, which is more refined and some sort of feature for testing. So that okay. way, um, f- feature-wise, it can be t- tested. Currently, we have not written any tests, but tests can be written and executed. And maintenance-wise, like, uh, like typically, an app will go into development, right? So we, it, when we have good test cases and all, we can run the test cases and maintain it that way. Okay. Uh, based on the complexity, new versions of the app come every two weeks or every three months, like that. The frequency of the upgrades, typical. Okay. Do you run into optimization problems? Any time, uh, you know, response taking longer. Is there uh, room for optimizing in the code? Uh, definitely, right. I basically, right. There are like, like the way we are doing. Uh, mm. When I because it was just in a dummy project. So here, right. What I am doing is um, in the current in this current one in the model. What I am doing is I am looping through this and modifying mm-hmm. uh, finding the index and modifying it, right. So this kind mm-hmm. of grouping and all we can do, uh, uh, like uh, uh, we can, we could have used some other ways. Actually, instead of looping ourselves, we could have used map or index or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are there are declarative frameworks available. Okay, that is nice. Thanks. Yeah. It's a very good starting point for iOS development. Thanks and for the presentation. Yeah, and if you noticed, we have not run the app in a simulator or on a device. Everything we have done on a Xcode only. We have not hit yeah. the play button even, even once. And we have developed app with two pages. Yes, that is simple. And uh, that also we can see it working, Eric. It's a functional app within uh, Xcode without launching the simulator. And so the development type will drastically reduce. Uh, the, you can iterate over the, your design quite fast. Got it. That was nice. Great. Uh, Pankaj, one more quick uh, question. Uh, uh, for the gaming uh, enthusiast, like uh, if I want to have a gaming app in this, uh, is there any framework or how, uh, what is your suggestion? Uh, in iOS, uh, iOS provides like two main, mainly two gaming frameworks. Uh, one mm-hmm. is a sprite kit and uh, which is for the 2D games. And one is a uh, scene kit for the 3D games. So when we say create a new project, uh, open, uh, let's say we want to create a new project. So it provides that option actually. In iOS, we want to make a game. Or we want to make augmented reality based also. also. So now there's games and augmented reality also getting, right? So uh, Apple has come up with some framework like Metal and they are very good framework for graphics rendering. And those are being used when we develop the game. So when we select the game, it will ask us, whether we want to do a 2D game, a reality kit game, or a scene kit, basically 3D game, or a 2D game, or a metal game. 
so these are the four different uh, frameworks that I, I, apple provides for the gaming the game developer supporting game so developer this is apart from if somebody want to make use of uh, unity or something third party gaming I, we can uh, like more, like unity there there is a good integration between unity or uh, unreal and all right there engine mm. scientists there there is a good um, uh, good easy right. integration is possible right thanks thanks monkey you you welcome so it has taken like little longer than i anticipated this was wonderful this was quite engaging yeah so anuradha you can go ahead and ask the question hello hello pankaj yes yeah, yes. yeah. yeah i am prabhakar here so i really interested to attend this session okay i understood the i was always developing okay the logics okay so what is my question means i am the new okay so for that i am asking um i understand the uh, the project logic code okay but there is a, um, the project only have the same extension file okay so how it's finding the this is what view this is what the backend function so how it's find so uh, what is the okay. architecture Okay, so no, they, no, there, there's no great magic there. Yeah, yeah. So when we have a like a model file, Swift file, so the hmm. Swift file just generally comes only what we write. But whenever we are creating a Swift UI file, uh, at the bottom, uh, Apple this is using uh, the preview. Previews are being handled by this part. So for the every Swift UI file, it adds uh, the whatever structure we file name you created underscore preview preview provider. So this is what okay. is providing preview. If I comment this part. Okay. Uh, the preview will go. So this is the, the, the this is like a like the same as the content view, right? Content view is a view which has a one requirement that it should have a body which is a view. Similarly, uh -huh. there is a requirement that preview provider preview provider says that its body should have a view. Okay. 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 So few mm -hmm. things now to actually Apple uh, the way they do is little uh, nice and uh, tricky one. So basically, you know, there is an implicit return statement happening there. We, this is a function. Okay. Uh, this is a variable, right? So it has uh, this. What we have here is a variable which has having. This is a computed property basically. We are saying that this variable is of type view, and this is its content. So here there is a return statement, but. Uh, because there is only one statement, uh, Swift was modified few days back to saying that when we have only one statement in a function, uh, mm. by default it's a return statement, so no need to write return. So okay. that's how uh, it, it is looking better. It there is there should be a return statement here also. Basically, we are creating a big view and returning it that. Okay. So that's how it's happening. Even in everywhere inside there is a return statement. Ideally, uh, here there should be a return statement like that. Okay. okay. So, but okay. Uh, same uh, as well in the weather model also, right? That yeah. was the same as well with the weather model on dot a fifty extension file also. Yeah. So to... okay. In this file, there is no view provider, right? So okay. that's how it knows whether to display canvas or not. This canvas display okay. depends whether there is a um, this one provided or not. Uh, whether the okay. preview provider is there included or not. Mm, I got it. Got it. Got it. I I little bit confused about the, the extension file only the file ah, extension. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now I understood. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Ah, yeah. uh, Pankaj, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Hi, Pankaj. My name is Anuradha. Yeah. I really liked your session. Yeah, it was quick and very concise. I have a similar question. So this is regarding uh, uh, porting the app from uh, from porting the application from being a mobile app to be a uh, web version. Is it possible to separate the view part and the layout part alone and keep the model as it is? How do I do it? <laughs> Actually, you no, know, that is not standard iOS development because you no know, Apple wants to stick with Apple ecosystem. So, but there is somebody as I was trying to answer previous question. Somebody has come up with this Swift Wasm. Some person uh, I am not aware of him. He has come up with a way to convert that from the you know, Swift to the WebAssembly. 
So okay. this is not the inbuilt integral feature of the iOS or uh, Apple uh, Swift Swift UI frameworks. So, somebody else is reading the compiler. Swift now has become a like standard language. It provides like Lisp and all right uh, 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 protocols and all. It, it follows the standard like we can have like uh, uh, Microsoft code like Visual Studio code like extension for Swift and all can happen because it follows the standard uh, interface language interface. So like this, uh, somebody has come up with this uh, framework, uh, this uh, utility, which is converting Swift code into the web assembly. Okay. So is this all the code or only the model? Uh, it can do entire, uh, even the, uh, even the, all the code. View. It can do In, UI including the view. Including oh, okay. the view. But provided the views are standard, like if yeah. you use some third party views and all, then it will not happen. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one more question I had. Yeah. Yeah. So this um, uh, data that you are taking now, currently it's in a request response model. No? You click and you get the data. Yes, so if yes. I have to auto populate like a notification, how do I do it continuously? Maybe every five minutes I want the temperature to update on its own. So for to doing that, there are a couple of steps required. One step is we have to go first. We have to tell to the iOS that my app will do background fetch to tell mm -hmm. that. We have to go to the weather app and add the capability here. Uh, okay, so I will just add. Uh, uh, we have to add the capability saying that background refresh. Okay. Background modes. Okay. In the background modes, we have to tell what what do we do in background. So we are saying that we do background fetch. So then iOS will provide us an option that okay, you can do the background fetch. Then we have to come up with a service. We can define a service. And then there is another step in the, in the info field is we should say which is the service that will run in the background. So three steps oh, okay. required. First, request the capability, background uh, background fetch capability. Second is to do this. Uh, second is to like create a service and in the register that service in the info field list. Oh, okay. Info field list is a place like uh, Typically, like uh, if we need a location permission, uh, info field list, we have to tell that uh, in iOS app, like we'll get that like uh, this app is looking for your location. Do you want to allow or like this kind of uh, like permission message will come, right? Access permissions. So the we have to provide a pro pro property string here, permission string. What what iOS should display, and it will display by default. Okay. Okay. Like, but some app needs to take camera access, right? So it, we have to tell why we are using the camera access and we have to put that string here. So first time when the app opens the camera, iOS will pop, pop that message that this app, your app, this particular app needs camera access to do following statement. So that statement we have to mention in the info field is app name it takes on its own. So app name is going to access for this. Then the user can say allow or discharge like that. That's a standard iOS. Uh, permission management, basically access permission uh, handling, like pro pro trying to pro like protect user privacy kind of thing. Okay, okay, and thank you. Thanks. Does anyone else in the participants have any questions? Well, if there are no questions, uh, thanks for joining. Thanks, Pankaj, uh, for giving a good uh, starting point for iOS development. Uh, 